Hello there. The final part of lecture series 22 looks at asset ceiling, multi-employer plan, other long-term employee benefits and disclosure requirements of IAS 19. Most defined benefit plans are in deficit, meaning the plan obligation exceeds the plan assets. However, it is possible for plan assets to exceed the plan obligation. In such situation, IAS 19 stipulates an entity shall apply an asset ceiling, that is the surplus is measured at the lower of 1. The amount calculated as shown in Part 3 of the lecture series and 2. The present value of economic benefits in the form of future refunds from the plan or reduced future contributions. According to IAS 19, if an entity participates in a multi-employer plan, an entity shall classify the multi-employer plan as either a defined contribution plan or a defined benefit plan. In the case of a defined benefit multi-employer plan, the entity shall account for its proportionate share of the defined benefit obligation, plan assets, and costs associated with the plan in the same way as any other defined benefit plan as discussed in Part 3 of the lecture series. However, if sufficient information is not available to adopt defined benefit accounting, the entity shall account for the plan as a defined contribution plan. Next, other long-term employee benefits. Examples of these are long service leave and long-term disability. These employee benefits shall be accounted in a similar manner to how post-employment benefits are counted, as the benefits are payable more than 12 months after the reporting period in which the services are provided by an employee. However, any remeasurement component shall be recognized in profit or loss and not other comprehensive income, as is the case for defined benefit plans. Finally, disclosures. IAS 19 requires the following disclosure. For defined contribution plan, an entity shall disclose the amount recognized as an expense. IAS 19 has extensive disclosure requirements for defined benefit plans as follows. 1. Significant actuarial assumptions used to determine the net defined benefit obligation or assets. 2. A general description of the type of plan operated. 3. Reconciliation of the asset and liabilities recognized in the statement of financial position. 4. Breakdown into appropriate components of the charge to total comprehensive income. 5. Analysis of remeasurement component, identifying returns on plan assets as well as actuarial gain or losses recognized. 6. Sensitivity analysis with narrative description on how the defined benefit plan may affect the nature, timing and uncertainty of the entity's future cash flows. With this, we have come to the end of Lecture Series 22 on IES 19 Employee Benefits, focusing on the following. 1. Objective and Scope of IES 19 2. Type of short-term benefits. 3. Post-employment defined contribution and defined benefit plans. 4. Multi-employer plans. 5. Other long-term benefits. And finally, disclosure. The next bite-sized corporate reporting lecture series will look at IFRS 2, share-based payment.